The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan. With all power, that's a remarkable phrase for a man empowered by Satan. That should be a God phrase, right? With all power and ESV, false signs and wonders, we'll come back to that. And with all wicked deception, we'll come back to that. For those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth, they didn't love it, they didn't want to love it. That's where we'll end. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false and may, may be condemned with all who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now, let's talk about the first thing that has to happen. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion or the apostasy, the falling away, comes first. Now, that word rebellion or apostasy has to refer to more than the process of ups and downs in biblical faithfulness of God's people over the centuries. It has to refer to more than that because that observation won't work in Paul's argument. It's of no help in settling the hysteria that has taken over in some of the people of Thessalonica. If, if it's plausible that they could say to Paul, well, of course the rebellion has already happened. There's lots of people falling away because of this persecution. If they could plausibly say that, Paul's argument is useless here. It's of no help in answering his issue. So Paul, when he says the rebellion hasn't happened, the apostasy hasn't happened, he's thinking of something decisive, epic-making, climaxing, recognizable, catastrophic, sweeping, just before the man of lawlessness is revealed and Jesus kills him. Second thing, second event. So first, rebellion, apostasy has to come. Here's the second thing that has to happen. Namely, the man of lawlessness. And he's trying to say the coming, the parousia, the gathering to meet the Lord in the air, the day of the Lord isn't here, because before that, this has to happen. Verse 3 again, let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first, and, number two, the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. So the deception is going to be by means of making unrighteousness look really juicy. It's going to be so juicy you can't resist it unless you love and take superior pleasure in the truth. At the close of this climactic period of lawlessness and a great deception led by a person Paul is saying, the Son of Man will come unmistakably. So, where he sits in his period of time between his coming and his slaying, Paul's not talking time there, but where that guy sits down could be the Vatican, could be Geneva, could be Salt Lake City, could be Colorado Springs, could be Jerusalem. I don't think it's of the essence. It will be in the place of global focused Christian worship, which has become anti-Christian. That's where it'll be, wherever. Why will they be deceived? Why will they perish? Verse 10, because they refuse to love the truth. 
Don't miss that word love. It does not say believe. It does not say be convinced of. It does not say stand for. It's not a mental word. It's a heart word. With all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, do this or you will be deceived. They refused it. Don't want the love of truth. Not just I don't want truth, I don't want the love of truth. The very thought of loving truth is so foreign to me. That's, that's what deceived people feel. Literally, because they did not welcome a love for the truth. They didn't want the love of the truth in their hearts and that's why they are deceived and that's why they are perishing. And it gets clearer, it gets clearer in verse 11 and 12. What's the love of the truth that they don't have? What, what is that? You're using the word love. What, what do you mean, Paul? Well, they don't welcome a love for the truth. Therefore, God sends them, are you with me? Verse 11, God sends them a strong delusion. So you don't want to love the truth? All right. Delusion is my appointment for millions of Christians. God sends a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false. Now, is that believing, believing, there's the word, yes, it does say believing. Does that believing what is false and falling in line with the man of lawlessness, is that at root an intellectual mistake? No. They did not believe the truth, but here's the alternative to what I mean by believing in the truth. They had pleasure. You Eudakesantes, same word used for this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. They had pleasure in unrighteousness. So the opposite of believing the truth is to find pleasure in unrighteousness. 